Well, today we're going to talk about um, protein intake and how much is optimal um, and what the current literature out there is saying, what the current science is saying. And so I'm going to reference today an article written by Eric Helms. Um, you know, you can YouTube or Google Eric Helms and really find some just incredible information. Again, this is um, one, of the, one of the reasons I'm shooting these videos for you guys is that there's some really great information that has come out over the last couple of years, last 10 years maybe, uh, but very recently as well. And it's, it's a constantly evolving science, um, and the scientists that are studying this stuff now, everything is super relevant to, um, to fitness and very specific to a lot of the goals that um, most people come into a gym have, namely losing body fat, preserving and increasing muscle mass, and increasing your strength and hypertrophy and all that stuff. So today, I'm referencing the article of talking of Eric Helms' position on protein intake and how it has evolved over the years and how, since he is one of the drivers of, of protein research, um, it's really kind of the standard right now. And so back in 2012, which is recent, right? It's just a couple years ago, it's five years ago, the, his contention was that there's um, some pretty good benefit to having your protein set at about 1.3 to 1.6 grams per pound of body weight, and that's pretty high. That's pretty high, right? Um, and so the gold standard um, over the last 20, 25 years, maybe a little bit longer, for adding muscle, um, or preserving muscle and adding lean body mass, has been between 0.8 to 1 gram per pound of body weight. And, and if you're at, in the fitness world at all, um, that's kind of what you hear, eat one gram per pound of body weight of protein. So Eric's contention was it was much higher than that and there would be some benefit to having it much higher than that. So that was back in 2012 and as a good, as a good scientist and, and researching this stuff um, and having some discussions with other people in the industry, learning from each other, learning from different research uh, that's being done on this stuff, um, he's evaluated his position on that. So that, that uh, have the notes here from the article, that is a very high protein recommendation and kind of like what's controversial at the time, it still is controversial, is there any benefit of having that high? Can you use that much protein? Um, so out of the, the kind of back and forth, the studies he's been doing, the, kind of some of the conclusions that he's come to is that maybe that recommendation was a little too high, but there's definitely some benefit to having it higher than the traditional 0.8 to one gram per pound of body weight. And a couple of the points that he made um, to have it a little bit higher uh, is that there's, it's gonna help, especially in dieting, is that you're gonna have a higher satiety, meaning that you're not gonna be as hungry if your protein's a little bit higher. Um, maybe not as high as 1.5. I think at the, kind of the end of figuring all this stuff out, the final recommendation was about 1.1 to 1.3 grams per pound of body weight, which is obviously higher still than that, that 0.8 to 1, but the benefit is that it does show some evidence that it does preserve lean body mass a little bit higher um, than having it on the lower end, has a little higher satiety, like I said, um, can, it, can have a positive effect on your mood when you're dieting. This is all now talking about dieting. Um, so basically, there's no downside to having that higher protein intake. You don't want to go too high according to the research because there doesn't seem to be any strong support that there's evidence to have it at that higher level. So to have it at that 1.5, 1.6 grams per pound of body weight. And then when you're dieting, it's always a calorie balance to lose body fat. So you have, would have to give up some of your other macros. You'd have to give up some carbohydrates or fat. Um, and as you start to diet, you get on some of these lower calories you, you need to have those macronutrients in there, or you should, um, just to have more balance in your micronutrients, your essential fatty acids, and stuff like that. So having it at that higher level doesn't show, to have the, the very high level, doesn't seem to show much benefit according to the research. Having it just a little bit higher does. This is the great thing about um, kind of the time we're living in right now as fitness, uh, people that are involved in fitness and you know, for you guys trying to see what is best and what is optimal. It's no longer bro science, as they call it. 
It's no longer just finding the biggest guy in the gym, like I said in the first video, and figuring out what is he doing. Because that's not, you know, that's not always a causal thing. Genetics play such a big factor. So just because you got a guy who's very lean and very big, that's not the way you should be researching your, what you're going to do with your body. It should be on these bigger studies um, that show evidence for the recommendations. And so I guess I'll just read Eric's kind of final recommendations here. And what we're looking at is that if you're not on a diet, if you're not, sorry, if you're not on a calorie deficit diet, then the traditional recommendations of 0.8 to 0.1 grams per pound of body weight are probably still fine. Um, that's probably the highest amount you need to kind of um, add lean body mass, preserve lean body mass, because you're gonna have plenty of other room with the other macronutrients. And just briefly, the higher your carbohydrates are, the more proteins, the, the, the less protein you need because carbohydrates are protein sparing, uh, meaning reduces your protein um, requirement when you're in a calorie surplus or maintenance. But referring to, to dieting, we probably do wanna push it up to 1.1 to 1.3 grams per pound of body weight, okay? Um, so that's about it. Um, as you're evaluating or as you're listening to this stuff, just know that I'm taking from the most current research and I'm always trying to keep abreast on this stuff when we design programs and, and give recommendations through Renaissance Physique. There's so much information out there that even as a fitness professional, uh, it takes time to sift through it. So I'm just trying to pr present the best stuff that's out there to you guys. Um, and act as a bit of a filter for the information out there. So you can bank on that when you're seeing this stuff It's pulled from the most relevant and reliable literature that's available um, to me. Have a good day guys